Hello friends, Christian here with Brick Life Crisis. This channel is recommended for adult fans of LEGO and teen fans of LEGO. If you are younger than the age of 13, you're welcome to watch, but first, get your parents' permission. Hello friends, Christian here with Brick Life Crisis again. Today's video is one that is uh, more than a year in the making, and that's because the set we're looking at today has been out for well over a year, and I just got around to acquiring it. This is the bookshop, set number 10270 from LEGO Creator. This is officially the last LEGO Creator Expert modular building. Because after this, the police office or police station is no longer technically part of the Creator Expert line. It is uh, its own new thing at the adult 18 plus line, whereas this is a 16 plus set. Um, and that is part of LEGO's um, marketing effort towards acquiring new adult customers. So anyway, uh, without any further ado, let's go ahead and break this open, build it up, and see what we think. Are you as excited as I am? Let's get going. All right, so inside the box we have a whole bunch of bags, a couple of 16 by 32 base plates, and two instruction manuals, one for each of those buildings. All right, let's get started. All right, here it is, set 10270, the bookshop. And as you can see, this modular actually consists of two separate buildings. We have the bookstore called Birch Books on the one side and this apartment on the other. So that includes five minifigures. And uh, this is a split building. So it's, instead of being a 32 by 32 base plate, there are two 32 by 16 base plates so that you can split these apart and reconfigure them if you so desire. Let's go ahead and take a closer look. So this set included five different minifigures. Let's go ahead and take a look at each one of those one by one. All right, first up is this little guy. Um, he's got kind of a fun face print. He's looking a little bit worried there. He's got kind of a medium azure beanie cap and a green scarf. Let's go ahead and take those off and we'll get a better look. So with those accessories removed, you can Get a better look at the torso print, which is pretty good. Looks like he's got a banana t-shirt under his plaid jacket. He has the uh, adolescent legs that do not bend. And if we turn him around, you can see he does have an alternate face where he's looking a bit happier. I do really like that scarf piece and the beanie cap in that uh, medium azure color is pretty cool too. Those both suggest, along with the kind of fall colors on the birch tree, that uh, this scene is taking place in the fall. Next up is this gentleman, who kind of looks a bit like George Lucas to me. Um, got gray hair and a beard and a flannel shirt on, some gray pants. And if we flip them around, you can see the back print. No alternate face, as you can see, but a pretty good figure overall. Looks like a maybe a grandfather or something like that. Nice. And this lady, I think, is just excited to be alive. Or maybe she found that book she's been looking for for a long time. Decent torso print, some light blue jeans, and what is to me a new hairpiece. I don't know if this has been around for a while, but I haven't seen it before. It's a kind of a very curly, very large hairstyle. <laughs> she has a nice happy face on, and she does have an alternate face where she's looking just very satisfied. You can see the back torso print a little bit better there too. But uh, fun new hairpiece and a nice character, I think. Next up, we have this lady who has a nice looking face. I like that torso print. If we flip it around, you can see that torso print on the back. And she also has an alternate face where she's looking a little less excited, but still pleasant. I like her glasses. Subtle, but nicely done. Yeah, very cool. And finally, we have this gentleman who's rocking kind of a business casual look. A red shirt, tie, brown pants. Wearing some suspenders. You can see he has an alternate face as well. And uh, yeah, that rounds out our figure. There were a few accessories in this set as well. As you can see, we have a set of garden shears, a flower, a new book print with Moby Brick on the front, which is kind of fun, and this model airplane. More on that in just a moment. But first, I just want to open up the book and show you that there is a 
printed page on the inside that says once upon a time. So yeah, very nice. So this little model plane is a kind of a pivotal plot point for this set. On the, the box it shows the airplane getting caught in the birch tree and the gentleman bringing out the ladder to help the young man get his airplane down. Um, but however, for some reason, and maybe it's just me, but this propeller is supposed to go into the end of this brick. Um, there are a couple of problems with that. First of all, this particular plate and the post that it sits on doesn't allow for that to go in. But even if I pull that out, I cannot get this piece to go in there and stay in. It will not. doesn't matter if I go this way or that. It just will not attach. So I don't know if I'm doing something wrong. My alternative to that was taking this piece, which was a spare, and adding it to the end. And then that small hole in the middle of that piece allowed that pin to go inside. And then it works. But then the plane is a little awkwardly long. It doesn't belong that way. If I take out one of these plates, it doesn't work either because the the bar piece that it goes into is too long. So this now won't attach properly. See, the directions have you put on both of these guys just the way I did. And then adding a little propeller, but it doesn't work. So I don't know if you've built this set and know the secret, or if I follow the directions incorrectly, I checked it many times, but if I did something wrong and you know it, let me know in the comments below. But for me, I couldn't get the plane to work. It's still a fun little accessory even without the propeller, but I couldn't get it to work properly. It shows right on the front of the box, the airplane getting caught in the tree. And you can see on the box art, it works the way that uh, it's supposed to. But I could not get that propeller to stay in to save my life. So not to belabor the point, but here are the instructions. And you can clearly see that we have a red and a yellow one by one round plate that attach to each other on top of that uh, one by one plate with the bar on it. And then it shows the propeller going in to the red one by one plate, which does not work. I think what should have happened is instead of that one by one red plate, they should have given you one of these things in red and then the propeller would have worked just fine. Maybe it's just me, but I could not get mine to work. And there was a spare of the propeller piece, incidentally, and I tried both. There was also a spare of the red one by one. I tried both. I even tried different colors of the one by ones. No luck, no joy, couldn't get it to work. So anyway, I have a defective plane. Maybe it's my fault. What do you think? All right, and here we have just above street level view of the main floor. And uh, the two buildings, as you can see, are separated right along here. Um, and they are on two different base plates, as I mentioned. So we can spread them apart. You can see the Technic pins down here that uh, would attach them together. Let's go ahead and take a look at these individually. So this set is called The Bookshop, so we may as well start there. You'll notice above the door we have the sign Birch Books, and those are prints. Incidentally, these are each their own tile, and they are prints. Um, on the floor, we have kind of a designer entryway. You'll notice a couple of leaves have fallen from the fall colors of the birch tree. The birch tree is nicely done with these Technic pieces. They have the little um, lines in them, just like a, an actual birch tree would, which is kind of fun. And this is the planter for the tree. And I only point this out because it's a little bit of an interesting build. The round edges are made up of hot dog pieces in black. There were five of them in total, one is a spare. So there are four black hot dogs that form this ring around the planter. And I thought that was kind of an interesting usage of parts. There's also a bird nesting in the tree. And the nest is made up of the um, kind of fur collar from the Harry Potter minifigure line with the Snape disguised as uh, Neville's grandmother. Um, that's the same piece and it's kind of a fun inclusion. Down here out in front, we have a small bookshelf with some display items. 
So there's a closer look at the Birch Book sign. There's an upside down lantern piece acting as a coach light here. And then we have a couple of gold plated uh, one by one tiles out there just to add a bit of detail, which is nice. Let's uh, open the door and walk inside. As we look through the front door, you can see uh, a suggestion of a cash register with some books on the counter. And there is a large bookshelf with several volumes on it. And you can see the stairway leading up to the second floor. So the build here is rather tall for this uh, first floor. So it's a little tough to get all the detail in there. Uh, there's that countertop with the um, cash register. It looks like there's a silver coin there and a couple of books. We have a landing and another small bookshelf. And a couple of windows in the back. There's that staircase. And then over on the, on the other side, we have another rather tall bookshelf with, again, several volumes on it. There's some nice uh, trans green uh, to act as kind of stained glass. And you can kind of see that down here below those archways. So some nice detail. And there is a printed tile there. Once upon a time, that is a second one. The other is in that book. There is a back door that leads out into this little grassy area. So the exterior of the second story is fairly unremarkable. Um, we have these half round uh, pieces down here to add some detail. And again, some more detail along the side of those same pieces. Some nice windows. We go around to the back. There's a little bit of a balcony area with a couple of seats and a table, with a coffee cup on it. A window that opens and a glass door that opens to the inside. And we have the stairway leading up to the third floor. We have a nice build for a grandfather clock there and a lantern, a floor lamp, um, and a little table with a coffee mug, a recliner, a little bit of a, a custom round carpet down there. Just some tiles making that up. And that's about it for that floor. You take the stairs up to floor number three. So the exterior of the third floor is uh, probably the part that I like the least as far as the design goes. This kind of round swooping motion just looks a little bit, I don't know, it looks too much to me. If it didn't have this part, if it just was rounded up here and then maybe came to an end, it would be all right. Or just this would be okay, but this whole big sweeping thing just looks a little odd to me. It looks better in person than it did in photographs, I think, but um, still not my favorite. This was kind of interesting treatment. We have these kind of cone pieces that have the um, that have the bar at the end. So those go into these one by one plates with the holes in them. And then there's a gray microphone piece that goes in there. So we have the little decorative elements on the sides. Uh, the windows here are fine, nothing to write home about, but they look good enough, I suppose. And then we have kind of a widow's peak up at the top here with a widow's walk and then some roofing. This back part comes off and you can see where the stairs would come up. And there's a nicely built up bed here. And uh, I like the color for the bedspread. And then we have this uh, uh, terrarium. And inside the terrarium we have a pet. And that pet is a uh, gecko or some kind of a um, chameleon, something like that. I believe this is the same mold that was released in the Tangled Disney set, um, but I wouldn't swear that because I didn't have it. But anyway, that is kind of a cool inclusion. It just snaps into place there. And uh, yeah, I like that. Nothing else to speak of in here. There's no dresser or nightstand or anything like that. Just a bed and the terrarium. Um, and then this is the other end, so there's nothing over on this side. I suppose you could look at those as empty bookshelves or something, the black uh, supports, but they're really just there to support these uh, slope pieces so that you can have a decent roof. Our second building is this one here. It's got a interesting color scheme. This is probably not a set of colors that I would have chosen if I were building a mock, but it actually looks really good, I think. The dark blue and the dark azure work really well together along with the white accents. 
Um, incidentally, that 107 address thing up there, um, that's a print, first of all. But 107 is the internal color number for this dark azure color, apparently. So that's kind of a, a fun little Easter egg. I also like down here we have some coach lights that are built up nicely. There's a door, of course, that opens up. And then we have this little stairway that's curved. That was kind of an interesting build. There's a Nexo Knight shield down there in the corner, and then one of these uh, pyramid style or triangular tile pieces over there just to allow you to get that angle. And then just stairs stepping up. And then we have these kind of curly vine pieces to act as railings. We have some uh, flowers and shrubbery underneath. Um, nice window set up there in the round. And then unlike a lot of the modulars, um, from the sides, this actually doesn't look too bad. There's only a couple of discolored things that um, have to do with the interior, um, but that one's fairly well done. Uh, around the back, again, of course, we have the, the door to get in, a little stairway leading up. There's a door down here that leads to the uh, cellar or the basement. And then we have a nice little garden over here with a couple of plants blooming including a pumpkin, so that's kind of fun. As we move up a little bit, we have a balcony area uh, with just a couple of plants and then a skylight, and that door opens to the outside in this case. Now let's take a look at the interior, starting with the basement. So this is the basement. These walls are about four bricks high altogether. We have some fun little things here. There's a, a mouse trap with a wedge of cheese. There's a bench with a sack of something, who knows what. Um, there's some shears on the side there for doing some pruning. We have some stairs leading up inside the house so that there's easy access to the cellar or the basement. And then we have this ladder over here. And this piece can unfold to either be a tall ladder or you can make it an A-frame ladder, uh, however you'd like. But this is the ladder that is used by the guy to get the airplane that's stuck in the tree. So that is the basement. The first floor of this, I guess, sort of Victorian home is nicely done up. We have that really nice uh, buffet bureau, I don't know what you call that, kind of piece of furniture there. But uh, those doors open and there are some bottles and stuff in there. I can't really get the camera in there to be able to show it to you, but um, there's just some brick built bottles and stuff and shelves. Uh, the fireplace is done up fairly nicely. I like the detail there. On the little table, we have a couple of teacups and a teapot and a newspaper. As you can see, there are two chairs there. As we come around the other side, you can see a potted plant, the stairs leading up. There is a hat and an umbrella hanging on a hat rack there right by the front door. And there's also a, a little bit of a doormat there, which is nice. Uh, and kind of an orange settee in the reading nook there. And then we have that uh, famous painting of the ship hanging on the wall there. So, nicely done up. Um, an interesting thing, one interesting build technique is you can kind of make out, these are white droid arms that are attached to one by one bricks with a little handle on it. And then over here, to make up this detail, we have a bunch of the candle pieces just stacked on top of each other. And the top of it gets caught on the bottom. And then down here, we have the little one by one with the micro bar sticking up. And that's what, uh, that's the way they attach. So that was kind of clever. I enjoyed that. So this is the top of that hutch. There's some nice kind of detail on the top with these relatively new pyramid pieces. And then the doors just open up. And there is a more close up of that hutch. You can see there's some bottles and jars over here. And then I'm not sure what this is supposed to be. If I take this frame off, you can get a little bit better look at it. It almost looks like a coffee dispenser or something. There's like a nozzle underneath. So I'm not sure what that's supposed to be. Maybe you can tell me if you know. Um, but it's some nice detail there. Um, and then this just goes right back there. And so that's the hutch. At the top of the house we have a bit of a chimney and again a widow's walk, which is done up nicely enough, I suppose. Again, there's that patio, balcony, whatever. Um, you can take the back wall off of this to reveal the interior of the bedroom. I really like that bed. It's a bit bigger than the one that was in the other building, 
I like the detail there of the quote unquote work, woodwork. Uh, they again use these pyramid pieces for the bedposts. There's a nicely built up uh, lamp there with a minifigure head in gold. And then a little flower there. We have another famous painting here of the bridge. And then the dresser here is done up fairly nicely as well. And then we just have a couple of windows. Stairs lead right up here. Um, no bathroom in this building or in the other one for that matter. So I guess these guys have to hold it or maybe you can build your own little outhouse. Uh, but uh, other than that oversight, I think these are done fairly well. And here's just a quick look at the treatment on the roofing of the, uh, the house section. As you can see, we have a bunch of the quarter round tiles in the dark blue. And uh, there's some black plates behind it, but that's kind of nice. And then these uh, windows have some nice detail at the top as well. Kind of matches the one above the door. Really nicely done. And then the chimney with a few masonry bricks to give it some extra detail. Really, really nicely done. So this modular did come with two sets of the pins, and that is so that you can, if you so desire, reconfigure these. So the only thing I don't like about this configuration is the proximity of the lamp and the tree, um, but you could easily modify that just by moving the 2 by 2 plate and exchange it with a tile, and then they would not be put it up together like that. But uh, you can see we have the other pins over here. So it came with two sets, but that just gives it a little bit of a different look, which is kind of nice that you have that option. So this set retails for $180 here in the US, or $179.99. And it is available primarily through Lego Shop at Home and uh, Lego stores. However, you can get it through Amazon and online through Walmart and Target, places like that, but primarily through Lego. Anyway, um, it's a pretty cool set. I like the fact that you can separate those two buildings and reconfigure them or uh, put them in between other modulars if you want to in your city. Um, decent selection of figures, I suppose, although I wish there was maybe one or two more. Um, I'm still a little confused about the airplane thing. Uh, I like the birch tree. The opinions are kind of mixed on that, but I think it's pretty cool. And overall, I really like this set. I enjoyed building it, and I'm happy to have it as part of my collection. So that about wraps it up for today. This has been Christian with Brick Life Crisis. We hope you enjoyed the video. If you did, please leave us a like. If you have any questions or comments, feel free to leave those below. And as always, thank you so much for watching. And until next time, take care. Bye for now.